Do you swear or affirm that the testimony you are about to give is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God? I'm grateful to my father's, for my father's brave act of hope 40 years ago and for the privilege of being an American citizen and public servant, where I can live free and free of fear for mine and my family's safety. Dad, I'm sitting here today in the U.S. Capitol talking to our elected professionals talking to our elected professionals is proof that you made the right decision 40 years ago to leave the Soviet Union and come here to the United States of America in search of a better life for our family. Do not worry. I will be fine for telling the truth. I, our collective military service is a special part of our mil, uh, family's history and uh, story in America. I also recognize that my simple act of appearing here today, just like the courage of my colleagues who have also truthfully testified before this committee, would not be tolerated in many places around the world. In Russia, my act of expressing concern to the chain of command in an official and private channel would have severe personal and professional repercussions and offering public testimony involving the president would surely cost me my life. I privately reported my concerns in official channels to the proper authority in the chain of command. On July 10, 2019, Alexander Danyaluk, then Ukraine's National Security Advisor, visited Washington, D.C. for a meeting with National Security Advisor Bolton. Ambassador Volker and Sondland, Ambassadors Volker and Sondland, and Secretary Rick Perry also attended the meeting. I attended with Dr. Hill. We fully anticipated the Ukrainians would raise the issue of, meet of a meeting between the presidents. Ambassador Bolton cut the meeting short when Ambassador Sondland started to speak about the requirement that Ukraine deliver specific investigations in order to secure the meeting with President Trump. Following this meeting, there was a short debriefing during which Ambassador Sondland emphasized the importance of Ukraine delivering the investigations into the 2016 elections, the Bidens and Burisma. I stated to Ambassador Sondland that this was inappropriate and had nothing to do with national security. Dr. Hill also asserted his comments when proper. Following the meeting, Dr. Hill and I agreed to report the incident to the NSC's lead counsel, Mr. John Eisenberg. This would undoubtedly result in Ukraine losing bipartisan support. On July 21st, 2019, President Zelensky won a parliamentary election in another landslide victory. The NSC proposed that President Trump call President Zelensky to congratulate him. On July 25th, 2019, the call occurred. I listened on the in on the call in the Situation Room with White House colleagues. I was concerned by the call. What I heard was inappropriate, and I reported my concerns to Mr. Eisenberg. It is improper for the President of the United States to demand a foreign government investigate a U.S. citizen and a political opponent. I was also clear that if Ukraine pursued an investigation, it was, it was also clear that if Ukraine pursued an investigation into the 2016 elections, the Bidens and Burisma, it would be interpreted as a partisan play. This would undoubtedly result in Ukraine losing bipartisan support, undermining U.S. national security, and advancing Russia's strategic objectives in the region. I want to emphasize to the committee that when I reported my concerns on July 10th relating to Ambassador Sondland, and then July 25th relating to the President, I did so out of a sense of duty. I privately reported my concerns in official channels to the proper authority in the chain of command. My intent was to raise these concerns because they had significant national security implications for our country. I never thought that I'd be sitting here testifying in front of this committee and the American public about my actions. When I reported my concerns, my only thought was to act properly and to carry out my duty. I want to take a moment to recognize the courage of my colleagues who have appeared and are scheduled to appear before this committee. I want to say that the character attacks on these distinguished and honorable public servants is reprehensible. It is natural to disagree and engage in spirited debate. And this has been the custom of, uh, of our country since the time of our founding fathers. But we are better than personal attacks on U.S. national security and advancing Russia's strategic objectives in the region. region. I want to emphasize to the committee that when I we do not serve any political party, we serve the nation. I am humbled 
to come before you today as one of many who serve in the most distinguished and able military in the world. The Army is the only profession I've ever known. As a young man, I decided I wanted to spend my life serving this nation and gave my family, that gave my family refuge from authoritarian oppression. For the last 20 years, it has been an honor to, and to represent and protect this great country. That when I reported my concerns on July 10th relating to Ambassador Sondland, and then July 25th relating to the President, I did so out of a sense of